Think about your own relationships that you have in your life, um, whether that's your friendships or your relationships with family members or your neighbors or others. Those relationships are probably characterized by some kind of reciprocity. There's some things that you give and there's things that you receive from those relationships. And so one of the things that often happens for students with significant disabilities is rather than really establishing roles within activities where there's a sense of reciprocity, we often set up relationships so that students with significant disabilities are kind of the designated receivers of support. They're not thought about in terms of their gifts and their strengths and what they have to bring to a relationship, but as the ones who are in need of something from someone else. So when we can design activities in schools, that capitalize on what people with disabilities have to contribute, they're much more likely to be seen in terms of their contributions, and those are the kinds of roles that tend to lead to relationships. When we're establishing inclusive activities in our classrooms, we want to think very carefully about the roles that we give to students with significant disabilities and look for ways to put them in leadership roles, for them to have opportunities to share their talents or their strengths with others. What makes something a value role? Well, that's a question that's probably best answered by students themselves. It might mean having a leadership role in a club. It might mean being an active member of a cooperative learning group. It might having a key, be having a key responsibility in a small group activity. All of those might be valued roles. However, there's some questions that educators might use to reflect on to discern whether or not roles that we're giving to students with significant disabilities would be ones that would be valued by their peers without disabilities. For example, would someone else need to do that task if a student with significant disabilities wasn't doing it? Or would the tasks that we're giving to students with significant disabilities be ones that other peers would consider to be cool and desirable, ones that they would want to do? Are youth with disabilities contributing in ways that they choose for themselves? Or are we always assigning certain roles to students with significant disabilities? And are students with significant disabilities contributing in those roles in different ways over time? Or is it always kind of a static role that we give to them? They're always the designated receiver of help. They're always the one who does this. Or do we give students opportunities to choose those roles and they vary over time? And last question that you might use as a reflection point is, uh, does everyone in an activity have a chance to be both the giver and receiver of help? And that means we have to really think creatively about what, stu what a student with complex support needs might have to contribute. Uh, what roles might they have that uh, put them in a position where they can share their interests and strengths and talents with other students?